Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's the 1996 comedy, Black Sheep, with Chris Farley and David Spade, the Saturday Night Live veterans who made us laugh during the 90s, and starting with their successful follow-up to Tommy Boy. And, and while Tommy Boy was a much better film, you know, one of the greatest comedies I ever saw from these two, this movie was definitely not as good as, as it was. But at least, you know, we did get to see those two again after that film. On the other hand, this was indeed the film which you know, Chicago Tribune film critic Gene Siskel had walked out out of this film, you know, for like roughly 20 minutes or so, you know, came back, walked out. I can see why, because, but I, I know, because he was not a big fan of Chris Farley, and he's been always dismissing him and, and several of the films that he went to see. Though well, he probably hasn't seen any of the later films that follow this, but that's okay. Now, I remember when I first saw this movie, it was on HBO back in 1997. I haven't seen this movie ever since. Yeah, I was 12 years old at the time. And I, I wanted to see what's the fuss all about about this film, and I remember ha having this film being horrible and, and and truly over the top when it comes to Chris Farley just making all these pratfalls all the way around. Yeah, cause, I mean, it's looking at the ads, you know, that's pretty much what you see, like he's a jinx or something. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, after all these years, I finally gave this movie a shot. I finally bought this on Blu-ray for five bucks at Target, um, and having to watch this movie after all these years, I thought, yeah, I, I guess this movie wasn't so bad. It's not great, but it's not that bad. Um, so I had to change my mind on that one. It's also the fact the that the movie also has a pristine, high-definition quality to the film, so it actually looks a whole lot better than before. So it's amazing that even for a 1996 film, this I would imagine this movie looking this good. Because I heard that Tommy Boy had, had a soft looking picture quality. From him. But it's better than nothing. Um, anyway, it, it stars Chris Farley with David Spade, along with Tim Matterson, Christine Appensall from you know, Richie Rich, and you know, Mac and Me. You know, Michael too, so on and so forth. Yeah, she's been in the Saturday Night Live. But Gary Busey, yeah, which he's actually very good in this movie, surprisingly enough. He sold a lot of scenes in this role as the, <laughs> the Vietnam veteran. With Bruce Miguel and Timothy Carthart, it's written by Fred Wolf. It's directed by Penelope Spiris, who gave us Wayne's World, along with movies like The Little Rascals and The Bellevue Hillbillies, which I didn't care about that much. But, yeah. The movie begins when a caring but slightly clumsy Mike Donnelly, who's played by Chris Farley, drives an advertisement truck in the support of, of Al Donnelly, played by Tim Madison's campaign for governor of Washington State. He's actually competing against uh, Evelyn Tracy, who's played by Christine Appensall. And while driving the truck, he's being chased by a couple of dogs running around until all of a sudden he almost ran over a truck and hits a ladder on top. Wants up crashing into so many parking meters and lands straight right into a local movie theater, Marquee. So, prior to his embarrassment, Al's campaign manager, Roger Corvey, who's played by Timothy Carthart, has advised Al to get rid of him. But Al also decided to have Mike campaign for him in town with the assistant of campaign aide, Steve Dobbs, who's played by David Spade, who finally accepts the job in the returning spot of Al's staff that follows the election. But once Steve tries to go pick up Mike, he accidentally run over a Vietnam veteran named Sergeant Drake Salvage, who's played by Gary Busey, who ends up stealing his rental car. 
So walking around town, he finally spotted Mike in his old house, uh, fixing a car of his. And, and once they drive along, they went to a local gas station until Mike spotted with some underage kids drinking outside of the food mart. And then once he tries to do that, a local photographer started taking pictures of him, trying to make us believe that he's actually drinking with them. But that's what led to his biggest troubles when they terminated his recreation center. You know, he got fired from the job, and then and a couple of thugs came along and started to burn the place down. That is until the first cop arrived at the scene, who happens to be, to be a friend of his, named Robbie McGillum, who's played by Grant Paylove. So they left him off the hook, and both of them decided to take Mike's car, giving him the instructions for Steve, and head all the way to Garfield County into a local cabin, which happens to be a cabin of, that's filled with, you know, bats, and yeah, there was one bat that actually shoot up, and yeah, there was one bat that, that was arriving, and then there was a lot of things going wrong, as, as it turned out. So during the next day, Steve and Mike were hanging flyers across the entire town, you know, putting up some posters and many others, you know, to support the campaign. While Steve tries to make a call, you know, on his cell phone, you know, looking for a replacement for a reception, that is until he finally spotted Drake Salbitch with an old school bus with a TV, a hammock, a grill, and several weapons plus a lot of mines uh, in the way. Prior to that, Steve accidentally loosens a rock pile of stones, which, yeah, a, a huge boulder actually knocked out his cavern, and that's where the whole place started tilting, just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where they, <laughs> yeah, where the refrigerator was, was stuck inside <laughs> the plug, and then when he took it off, it fell in. So. Yeah, there were a lot of things that were going on in the cabin, too, as well. Including when the, the roof came right off and it starts raining hail all the way. Yeah. So during the next night, Mike decided to head out over to Seattle just to talk to Al, who's being part of the MTV Walk the Boat campaign. He wants to hang out with these guys, making a fool of himself on stage. You know, basically shocking both Al and... Corvary, yeah, which, you know, that's where he says that word, kill Whitey. So, um, so after a while, that's when they found out that he became a huge embarrassment towards the campaign. But meanwhile, Governor Tracy, hoping to sabotage Al's campaign, had purchased some pictures of Mike at the Recreation Center fire and post them on the TV news only to allow Tracy to win the election. But then suddenly Mike had discovered that all the voting results were wrong. They looked at all the voters at, at a local library considering that all these total votes that came from Garfield County were actually dead people. And there were only a hundred, yeah, there were mostly dead people that that they must have stolen. And, and there were only 100 and 500 to registered voters out there. So Mike had recognized the two men who set the, the recreation center on fire sitting next to Tracy. So this was gonna be one of the biggest ones of all. So in order to bring some proof, um, Mike and Steve went all the way down there while being disguised as a cop, you know, borrowing his friend's police car and drive all the way to Washington during the campaign between Al and Tracy. And while he finally got there, you know, he finally showed the proof on the voters that, that turned out to be a fraud. Apparently a sniper came along and almost about to shoot Mike, but luckily enough he was being saved by Drake. And he actually finally got to speak in front of a thousand people who were there in line. And until he got, uh, until after he picked him up, he accidentally fell into, <laughs> into Tracy. Yeah. So then, 
Uh, three months later, he finally got back to his old job, and Steve was now his assistant for Al, and everything went back to normal, as it seems. Now, that is until uh, Mike winds up getting stuck <laughs> into the airplane, yeah, and they threw him all the way, and he started flying while he's on there, and then the movie was over. Um, yeah, it's, it's not as good as Tommy Boy, as I said before, and it... But I gotta admit, it did have its funny moments. I did enjoy a lot of <laughs> a lot of hilarious scenes with with Chris Farley and David Spade, especially when they're trying to you know trying to go after that bat that was inside the cabin. Yeah, they had a hard time trying to trying to get rid of that bat. And yeah, there were a lot of funny scenes in there. But I know I have to admit, it did went a little overboard with with Chris Farley just running around, you know, getting caught. Like, for instance, when when they were about to do that campaign, they went into an older couple, which turned out to be the mother and and son. Yeah, they looked too old to become their parents alone. Yeah, once he was just helping them out, trying to give them the... just putting all the groceries inside the trunk, his tie wants up getting stuck inside, and, and they just wound up driving where... You know, thinking that he's going to attack them. Yeah, they drive him all the way and and he wants to be dragged into to the parking lot and all that sparks started to fly out and you know, everything. And then there was another scene where you know, he actually got caught in two boating booths, you know, with two people inside. Yeah, you know, trying to boat their governor and, and he was trying to get them out of there too, but then they keep hitting him, you know, thinking because you know, since he is, you know, huge and everything that he did something completely stupid. That sort of thing. And once again, Christine Applesall just playing a crazy person as usual in this movie. It's like the character she plays in some of these films I've seen. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. Other than that though, it was okay. Um, it wasn't great, it wasn't perfect. Uh, I gotta admit, I, I kind of felt like the movie was going to be as bad as I, I remembered it. And I, it turned out that um, I didn't think it was nearly as bad as, as I thought when I first saw this back in 1997. But it, it was worth it. It's not, um, it's just not, uh, I mean, it, it was as funny as I, as I can recall, but I guess it's just been such a long time since I last saw it. I gave this movie a chance. I mean, it's just a shame that you know Chris Farley is no longer with us now, and David Spade is already doing different comedies already, you know, already with films like Dickie Roberts, uh, former child star, you know, Grown Ups, and all all these other films he's been in. Because also, not to mention he was doing TV shows like Just Shoot Me, which that's a good show by the way, and Rules of Engagement with Patrick Warburton. But I'll give this movie a pass. It's yeah, it, it's worth watching it, if you're a big fan of Chris Farley and David Spade. And I know I am too. I, I always enjoy watching them on Saturday Night Live and, and so on. Yeah. So that's cool. So anyway, I give Black Sheep two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.